It could be an impromptu cattle drive on your hunting property. Hey, maybe a blizzard just hits your area or got a lot of hunting pressure right on the fence. All of these factors can influence your success. And that's why scouting is important right up until opening day. It's all about scouting. Knowing that land like the back of your hand. So we're kind of starting from scratch here to see if we can develop another deer pattern. But right now, the pattern is unpatternable. This day and age, people scout year round. They're scouting January, they're scouting in December, they're scouting in July, August, all the way up to the season. But the most important scouting, I believe, is the days, if not the day and hours, right before the season. Why is that? Well, there's a lot of things that can happen that can change hunting patterns. What we found here is a pattern. These deer want to go to this green field right here, off to my right. Well, that's great. This morning we almost had them. In fact, probably could have had a nice buck, but the big one didn't show up. But the wind switched. See that? Can you see that? The wind switched. So instead of being out there shooting back towards the fence line, we're gonna be at the fence line shooting to where they're coming from. They're coming from some rough country off to my left here. We're taking some old hay. I'm putting it down just to kind of get rid of the mud a lot of mud from the snow. And then we're gonna cover ourselves up with some camouflage netting that I brought along right here and sit in there tight. We should have the sun at our back most of the afternoon. Hopefully right before sunset, those deer will start streaming back out on the same pattern and we'll get a buck. First and foremost is other hunters out there. Deer, they sense when there's more activity going on in the fields around them. And on the roads, camps are being set up. A cabin is being used over here. There's people going in and out of farmhouses more. And those deer feel that. They know that something's ramping up. And of course, some hunters can't just, they just can't help themselves. They're out putting up tree stands. They're putting up ground lines, things that they should have did weeks and months beforehand. I just can't win, buddy. So that's one of the things that can happen. The next thing that can really change up your hunting just hours before the season, weather. It doesn't matter if it's like I experienced an all out snowstorm or just a heavy downpour of rain or some hurricane gale force winds come in. All of these things can just subtly change the whitetail patterns that you were watching, you know, maybe a month or so before and you're real confident and smug that you're gonna get your chance at a big buck. And two days before the season, whoa, a weather phenomenon changes everything. Well, you've heard the phrase, if you don't like the weather, just wait a minute. In Wyoming, like many places, it rings true. Here today, it's snow. We are hunting in mid-October, the rifle opener for this unit in Wyoming, and we got pummeled over the weekend. Over a half foot of snow, two to three feet drifts because of the winds, and now we're hunting in white camel like we would maybe later in November or even a late season December hunt. We'll see what happens, but I think this snow is going to change the patterns, hopefully for the better.
Land of Whitetail is brought to you by Cuddyback, Cuddylink, 16 cameras, one sale plan, $10 per month. Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Technology. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. And by B&W Trailer Hitches Tow and Stow, the last trailer hitch you'll ever need. The absolute best food plot for attracting whitetails during fall hunting season is Buck Forage Oats. This is their highest priority and it's done in the world's greatest, most winter tolerant oats ever developed. Visit their website at buckforage.com or better yet, give them a call at 800-299-6287. You know, a lot of people ask me, you know, what's the most important thing for deer hunting? Is it what I plan in my food plot? What type of bow or gun do I shoot? What time of the day I go hunting? What's the barometric pressure? That stuff has a place in deer hunting and it can mean the difference between success and failure. But the most important thing in deer hunting is knowing the land that you're hunting on. And this starts with scouting. It's all about scouting. Knowing that land like the back of your hand and knowing how the deer use that land throughout the year. What's going on on the land? If you have oak trees and all of a sudden they start dropping acorns, what happens then? Your food plot that you were thinking you're gonna shoot that big buck on, all of a sudden is as dry as the Mojave Desert. Nothing is there. They're all in there eating that great food source, acorns. And what if that soybean field that you've been hunting the edge along, the next day the farmer comes through there and he combines it, changes the entire pattern overnight. These are, again, all things that can, in just hours, can transform your world from one of high hopes to, man, now what do I do? Could be a food plot, it could be a farm field. When I'm talking in those terms, trails can give you some of the best information that you could ever get about how deer use a property. If you have the luxury of a property where there's definitive deer trails, you can see how the deer are using it. Now, how do you hunt those areas? More scouting. If you have any experience in deer hunting whatsoever, you'll know that if you have a well-worn deer trail and it's coming through the woods and it's going to a food source, nine times out of 10 or 9.9 .9 times out of 10, if you have a stand in that situation, you're not killing a big buck. You're gonna see a lot of does and fawns and insubordinate bucks and they'll be using those trails. The big bucks use what we call tertiary trails. They're these little trails that come off of those main trails. So what I've always done throughout my life hunting is if I find a trail, I always say, get a bird's eye view, back myself out, and find out about the, the immediate area around that trail and how a big buck might come into that area. That's key for scouting. Well, as predicted, our snow is disappearing. We're in a little different place, and they didn't get quite as much snow as where we hunted this morning, where it was kind of like, yeah, the North Pole already. But we had a little bit of a snafu coming in here. They're doing a little bit of ranch work. They moved some cows around, so we just got of uh, kind of hope that they didn't move all the deer around. I'm thinking they didn't, but we'll find out soon enough. When I got to this other location, wasn't as much snow, but we did sit on a north facing slope and there was just the right amount of broken snow. So I figured, why not wear snow camo? I could watch all the little habitat below me, the brush pockets, the creek bottom, and look for a deer coming through and I'd be almost invisible to them. Plus I had good shooting platform, I had a great vantage point, everything was perfect until the road hunters started showing up. <laughs> I saw a lot of guys driving up and down the road. I could see it off in the distance. And then I thought I heard a truck park nearby. 
Well, it wasn't long before a guy walked out right beside me. He waved at me, going on with his business, but instead of just leaving the area, he started hunting kind of down in the brush where I was hoping a deer would come from. Well, with those guys hunting so close to me, yeah, you knew they were gonna get a deer. They jumped a doe and shot that doe. So the rest of the night for me was pretty much a wash. With them gutting the deer, talking and back slapping, not even a few hundred yards away, and then a truck driving in to get it out, I just kind of chalked it up to, well, that's hunting. Everybody has that problem. We're all sharing hunting property these days. So tomorrow, it was just another day to start hunting. This segment is brought to you by Outdoor Edge. There's never a dull moment with their razor sharp, replaceable blade knives. Weather, that was one of the factors that I was up against. Hunting pressure, yeah, that was another. And the third thing that was starting to become a problem, cattle. This one spot I wanted to hunt just had a lot of cows on it, here, there, and everywhere. If I was hunting the mule deer, it seemed like they were over there. If I wanted to go over in the brushy stuff and hunt the whitetails, it seemed like they were there. No matter where I moved to want to set up, the cows followed me. Maybe I was the cow whisperer. Well, I had a plan. I knew those deer wanted to slip off this feeding field. The wind was going to give me a position to sit back a little bit, but unfortunately, I knew I'd be close to the cows. What I decided to do was try to stay just off the main herd of cattle, lay prone, out of sight, out of mind, and hopefully a buck would step out in the open for me to get a shot. That was my plan. Within minutes, I had cows all around me, so I crawled out real fast and chased the cows off. Spooked them a little bit. Well, not enough. They just didn't seem scared of some creature crawling at them. They did move off far enough where I come back and sit down. Then the deer started moving closer. It's like, oh no, here come the cows again. This time I was getting more than a little anxious. I was getting ticked off. Yeah, I let a few curse, curse words fly as I chased those cows off. But this time, the cows spread out just enough. So I felt that this time they'd stay, give me a wide enough shooting path so that if the deer did come into my shooting lane, I'd have an opportunity. A few does slipped by, and then I saw a buck coming to the fence. He looked pretty good. Wasn't a giant, not like the ones I'd seen some bigger ones earlier, but definitely this far into the hunt, it was time to make a decision. It should be a 200 or 212. He went right down, right in that little gully. Whew. Just in time because what started to come in from the right side of me? All the rest of the cows! <laughs> no worries now though, the deer was down, the hunt was over, it was time to go see the prize I was granted. That's a good looking Wyoming whitetail right there. Not a super long shot, but a nice buck. Wyoming is so characteristic of having four by four deer, and this one here just fits the bill. But look at these brow tines, big brow tines, big G2s. This one's got a bladed G2. Now again, this isn't a monster buck, don't get me wrong, but he's fat, he's been eating on alfalfa all summer, so you know he's gonna taste good. He's gonna taste just like one of those Iowa Bucks, and he's respectable. It's been a tough hunt too. When you can overcome all these different challenges, patterns changing because of the snow, 
cattle everywhere, the hunting pressure we've been running into, and then run into a, a nice buck like this, and this was a great ending to a very, very challenging hunt. Land of Whitetail is brought to you by Sever Broadheads, straight through it. Get armed and deadly with Easton FMJ arrows. Outdoor Edge, make the cut. And by Sportsman's Guide. Nobody sells more tree stands, nobody sells them for less. Sportsmansguide.com. A lot of late muzzleloader seasons take place in December, January, especially in the northern tier states, you're going to be dealing with a lot of nasty weather, wind, rain, snow, cold temperatures, and as you know, moisture is a killer for muzzleloader efficiency. You've got to keep these things dry. You've got to keep your powder charge dry. So today, we're going to talk about three things that you can do to make sure your muzzle loader goes bang every time you pull the trigger. There are two areas where moisture is most likely to invade a muzzle loader and contaminate the powder, the barrel and the breech. When hunting in rainy and snowy weather, always keep the rifle pointed downward to prevent moisture from entering the barrel. As an added measure, use a barrel condom, a small rubber balloon, or a piece of tape over the end of the barrel to further prevent rain and snow from getting to the powder charge. Most modern black powder rifles have a closed breech system, but some are still susceptible to moisture invasion. I keep a gloved hand over the breech area to prevent moisture from getting to the powder charge. Scope caps or a scope cover will keep your optics from icing over. Taking a black powder gun from a warm environment into a cold one is a recipe for disaster. To prevent barrel condensation and powder contamination, keep the rifle at a somewhat consistent temperature. Leave it cased out in the truck or in the garage to match the ambient temperature you will be hunting in. When hunting in warm, dry conditions, you can probably get away with leaving a load in your gun for several days and not have to worry about it going off. Not so when it's cold and or moist. Discharge the rifle or remove the load at the end of the day. Swab the barrel and reload before going back out to hunt. Always remember to pop a couple of caps to clear the fire hole before reloading. Don't let Mother Nature rain on your parade during your late muzzleloader season. By making sure the moisture does not contaminate your load, you can be sure that your gun will go bang every time you pull the trigger. Today's product of the day, again, is the Sever Broadhead. Something that we haven't talked in detail is this practice mode. How does it work? It's very unique for this broadhead. What's neat about it is you can lock those blades tight and the blades stay tucked inside the ferrule. This is key. This allows me to shoot this broadhead, shoot it as many times as I want to make sure I'm shooting straight with my arrows as opposed to my field points. And then when it's time to go hunting, I just take a little set screw out of there put an O-ring back over the blades and I'm ready to go bow hunting. The beauty of that, those blades do not get dull when I'm practicing with it. So I can use this broadhead over and over and over again. And if I do shoot an animal with it, I can replace the blades. Check them out today. It's Sever, S-E-V-R, severbroadheads.com. So are you thinking of a, a new rifle, a new platform? There's a lot of options out there today for different rifle actions. Which one's right for you? The newer AR style? Maybe like your grandpa's older pump style rifle? Or like I'm shooting here, the bolt action? Well, my two cents worth, hard to beat the bolt action rifle. For starters, it's accurate. We got him. Bolt actions are inherently more accurate than ARs or pump style rifles. 
Now, that doesn't mean your old grandpa's pump style 30 out six isn't gonna be accurate, it can be. And a lot of those ARs, yeah, they're tack drivers. But dollar for dollar, you can't beat the accuracy of a bolt action rifle. Along with an accurate rifle, the bolt action, well, it has less or fewer malfunctions. It rarely malfunctions. It's just a simple operating system. Plus, it's easy to clean. Do you need another reason? Well, bolt actions come in all different shapes and sizes. Composite stocks, wood stocks, and with that, you can get them in very lightweight models six pounds or less. And I love that whether I'm in the whitetail woods in the Midwest or up in the mountains chasing those mountain deer.